Amen. The angel of this house, Pastor Davis. Amen. amen. First lady, amen. Do honor all the pulpit guests, all the ministers. Amen. They were laughing at me because they know I'm used to preaching quite a long time. <laughs> and now my time has been reduced to five minutes. So amen. they kind of... Uh, my little niece said, what you going to do now? <laughs> amen. I believe God is going to do a great work in just uh, four minutes now. Amen. But as I begin to study, amen, for this, this text, I'm um, looking at the uh, the sword of the spirit. Amen. God began to show me, you know, coming through uh, North Edge Comb and then getting a scholarship to go to uh, Chowan College and then from there going to Winston-Salem State College. But in the locker room, you know, being a football player, we used to have to put on our get our garment, our gear. We used to have to put on our helmet. We used to have to put on our shoulder pads. We had to put on we had to put on our our, our hip pads, our knee pads. And there were certain pads. Even with they even had a butt pad, but there were certain pads that we had to put on that that protect our physical body. But as what God began to show me was there was nothing that protected your spirit. And so when you have the word of God, which Come is on. the shield, I mean the sword, amen. And he gave me this symbol that it was the symbolic. If everybody, I want everybody to just stand right now, just stand. All of the building, just stand. This is what he told me to do, amen. So I have to do it. And if you reach down on your on your on your right side or your, yeah, your left side and just do like this. What you did symbolically was you just pulled out something that the enemy cannot take over. Amen. You just pulled out the word of God, which is your sword. You believe that, amen. amen. You will make it, amen. And so, what God began to show me was even though we put on all of this gear, there was nothing that protected your spirit. But He said, Now that you are in me, now I've given you the sword, I've given you the power of the living God. Come on, sir. Amen. And so, this is what happens, church. And I got three more minutes. If you look at Romans chapter 8, verses 26, it says, Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray as we are, but the spirit itself maketh intercessions for us with the moments and groanings which cannot be uttered. What am I saying? This is what I'm saying is this is why sometimes when you're going through and you don't know how you're gonna make it, but you're hearing this voice saying, Any day now I'm gonna bring you out. Any day now you just keep going and don't give up. That ain't you, that's that's God's spirit praying through me. And so you got to understand that the, that, that, that the sword is necessary because it is the word of God. It is what keeps us when we feel like throwing in the towel. Come on, church, and say amen. 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 If you look at Genesis chapter one, and I got two, three and a half more minutes. If you look at Genesis chapter uh, one, verses 28, it says, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fowls of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. What am I saying? This is what believers are supposed to do. We're supposed to be replenishing. We're supposed to be subduing. We're supposed to be reigning. We're supposed to be making things happen in the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody say amen. 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 Somebody say God is good. God is good. And so when we have the sword, amen, nothing can stop us. Amen. That's why some of us, we've been in some dilemmas. If the truth be told, you thought you was going to walk on me. You thought that this is it. This is my demise. Amen. But God said, not so. Because I knew the plans that I had for you. Plans of good and not of evil. To bring you to expect the end. Come on, church, and say amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 5. Four, verse 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even divided asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the nut marrow and a discern of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. What am I saying? This is what God is saying. When you put on this, when you take out your sword, and when you begin to walk the floor in your secret place, amen, when you begin to go on your knees, amen, and you tell the enemy, you know what, you ain't gonna have that, you ain't gonna have this. God begin to give you supernatural strength. That's why it's so easy now that you can even uh, encourage somebody else when you need encouragement yourself. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. God is, it has infused all of us. Amen. If you're a born-again believer, you have the word of God. Amen. You have the sword. You have the power on the inside. I don't care what the enemy say. Uh, you can go ahead and write my gravestone out if you want to, but I know God, amen, is my provider. Amen. I know don't he say me yet when I still Amen. Yeah. Hey some of us are listening to the enemy voice. And every time you hear the enemy voice, you ought to say, you know what? Uh uh-uh. uh. That ain't God's voice. That don't sound like my God's voice. So I need you to hush right now. So I say, right now. See, some of y'all, you know, you used to be bold in the world. But you came on Jesus' side and you kind of got complacent. Amen. But I got to tell you, greatest he that is in you, that he that is in the world. Now, you got 
got the power of the living God yeah. on the inside. They can't nothing take you out. Yeah. Come on, church, and say amen. 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 Woo, good God from Zion. Amen. God has, God has entrusted us with his word. What are we going to do with it? His word is priceless. When we handle it, it I, I, we miss when we mishandle it, we mishandle him. Amen. And I'm winding down because I got two two minutes and about 30 seconds. No. Amen. Amen. This is what it took me. It took me over to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Amen. Where Paul said, look, I, I, I had this thorn in my flesh. Uh -huh, and I prayed three times oh, that you might me. remove it. And then God said, ah. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. Yes, uh, hey, look, this, this is how good God is. He saves us. He gives us a sword. He put his word in us. And then he gives us a thorn in our flesh. What is that thorn for? For That thorn is to push you to your destiny. That thorn is there to bring you to your demise. That thorn is to bring you into who he has created you to be. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Uh, don't despise small beginning. I know it hurts right now. I know your body is wrecking with pain. I know they, they said all this and said all that. But God is working it out for you. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. If you just trust him. Yeah. If you just trust him. Yeah. Amen. We serve a God of second chances. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. They said I won't want to be now. Uh -huh. They said I couldn't even write a book. Uh -huh. They said I won't even going to be on TV. But I'm telling them, looking at the devil, say, uh -huh. look at you. Because I'm doing everything you said I won't going to do. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. The devil is a liar. Yeah. The devil he was, is a liar. There's enough power in this house right now. Uh -huh. That no sickness shouldn't even be here. Uh -huh. There's uh -huh. angels in every corner. Uh -huh. I have designed to work on our behalf. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Uh -huh. yeah. Where is he that is in us? Yeah. The he that is in the world. I got yeah. a minute and 40 seconds. No. So that's what you're working with. You got your sword. Come on, come on. Pull out your sword. Yeah. And let the enemy know yeah. what you're working with. Don't you leave here confused. Uh -huh. Don't you dare leave here mishandled. Uh -huh. Don't you dare leave here not knowing what you're working with. Uh -huh. Come on, somebody. Yeah. If God be for us, who can be against us? Uh -huh. Uh, sometimes God will wake you up in the midnight hour uh, Somewhere in between 3 o'clock and 3 15 You got to know it's time to get on your face It's time to go and pray uh -huh. and Even if you get sleepy And you feel like you want to go back and go to sleep Go in the bathroom and get on the side of the commode And start praying Get on top of the commode And just start, I guarantee you won't go to sleep Set it up And just start praying See you got to be relentless in, relentless in this That's time right. Good Come on somebody yeah. I got 93 more seconds and I'm going to take my seat. Amen. But what, before that, I want everybody to just put your hands together. Because man, you know what you're working with. Man, you know what you present. Man, you know what you're operating with. Amen. And this is the sword of the spirit. Amen. If you know the sword, when you pull it, amen, you can maneuver that thing. Amen. You can get this, you can get it back, you can get it side. Amen. You can maneuver that. So why are you feeling confounded? Why are you feeling restricted then? If you're maneuverable, why are you feeling locked up? Oh the reason they don't understand you is because they ain't operating with what you operate with. Amen. 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 Amen